Jota Jyoti. If you haven't seen me yesterday, my name is Christopher. I'm from the Philippines and I am one of your hosts for this live show. I hope you've been enjoying the event so far. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all joining us from around the world for this Jota Jyoti. My name is Sianya, I'm from Mexico, and I'm your co-host for today's live show. I'm so excited to be here with you again. Christopher, how about you share with us some of the highlights from day one of the Jota Jyoti? I checked out some of the webinars and a campfire and I absolutely loved it. Well, I actually just left a DJ dance party in the fun zone and the music was really fantastic. But since the start of Jota Jyoti, we had some really interesting workshops in the Innovation Lab. Small actions for messengers of peace taught us what actions we can take to promote peace. In the celebration arena, we met the host team of the next World Scout Jamboree in Korea. Wow, that's just great. I checked out also some SDG quizzes and let's not forget you need for the Jyoti and that is radio. Scouts have been connecting with each other all day using amateur radio frequencies. And how cool is that? And speaking of radio, you can tune into Jyoti Radio, request songs and more. Yes, yes, that was indeed cool. So moving on to our next segment, we would like to open the second show with a very special guest who will share with us 
some of his scouting experiences and his role in scouting today. Let's welcome His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Guillaume of Luxembourg. Moving on with our reporter, Celeste. Thank you so much to our dear host. Hello everyone, my name is Celeste Kaninua and I am from the Philippines. Today with us we have His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Guillaume of Luxembourg, Chief Scout of Scouting in Luxembourg and Chair of the World Scout Foundation. Welcome to Jota Jati Live, Your Royal Highness. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Right, great. Now, many people do not know about this, but you have been a scout for a very long time. Could you please tell us a bit of your own scouting story? Well, I have. I started as a Cub Scout when I was very young and then uh, became over the years, let's say a more and more accomplished scout. And I did uh, some quite uh, interesting and uh, marking experiences when I was a scout. I would say the first one was a dedication to uh, my community and um, especially going uh, where the people uh, needed it most. Uh, the visits, for example, in uh, homes with people, elderly home, elderly people who um, suffered a little bit of, uh, of solitude. That was something that really marked uh, my, scouting, uh, my scouting years. Uh, the second one was, uh, of course, discovering and having the opportunity to meet so many scouts all over the world, exchanges that were uh, extremely enriching. And thirdly, but definitely not least, was the opportunity to go to Nepal when I was already a much more accomplished scout to help in a community that needed um, forestation in, uh, in their villages, a school that needed uh, to be rebuilt and uh, playgrounds that uh, we, we managed to uh, rebuild after uh, natural disasters. Wow, that's so great. I think all of those experiences are really worth sharing. Also, I think we should tell our audiences that you are still very active in scouting up until this day. And now, sir, can you please tell us about your current roles as Chief Scout of Scouting in Luxembourg and as Chairman of the World Scout Foundation? So I am very privileged to have had a grandfather, the, my late uh, Grand Duke Jean, uh, who was chief scout of uh, Luxembourg for decades and who really left a trace in uh, Luxembourg scout uh, history. And I feel extremely proud to be able to follow him in his footsteps and uh, take up this role with um, high dedication and a lot of joy. And my second uh, now uh, position that I've taken uh, now very recently is a chairman of the World Scout Foundation, which is for me a great responsibility. And I'm, uh, I think, the first uh, chairman of the foundation who is still in his 30s, something that, that I can still say only for a month's time because I will be 40 next month. But uh, the time being, I am the youngest chairman ever of the World Scout Foundation. And it's, um, like I said, it's a big responsibility because it's uh, an, orga an organization uh, which helps, uh, of course, scouting all over the world. And uh, I think our job is really to work hand in hand with our team in uh, WUSM to uh, support, help support uh, projects, scouts projects all over the globe and we are eager uh, to do this uh, and uh, to, to hear more of scouts on the ground like yourselves uh, who can help us uh, direct and uh, and support really the, the projects that you need to be supported in your countries and uh, well, all over the world. That sounds very inspiring. Now finally we know that you have been involved in multiple humanitarian missions with the scout. What do you think is it important that us as a scout to help our communities? Well, I mean, solidarity is definitely one of the core values that scouts share all over the world. 
as our respects, as is solidarity, and as is uh, the respect and the love of nature. Um, during the COVID-19 crisis, of course, solidarity was the core value that um, really that, that helped scouts react in the right way uh, during this type of crisis. And I'm extremely proud of uh, the way our Luxembourgish scouts straight away since the first minute where the crisis uh, was declared. Um, they did the right things. They were on the ground. They were helping the right people. They helped the elderly who couldn't go to supermarkets anymore. They started uh, creating their own masks for people who needed it because there were shortages. Uh, and therefore, they were even, they are rewarded the European Citizens Prize 2020. And as their chief scout, I can only express my most heartfelt respect for all the work they have done and for the way they have reacted rapidly. And I think this reaction, uh, which was similar symbolized by all the scouts around the world is something that uh, highlights the importance of scouting and uh, where our responsibility as scouts lies. And so I think solidarity and the solidarity shown during the pandemic is something that even Baden-Powell will be so proud of us. Right, solidarity and scouting. I love that a lot. And I hope that our audiences here right now will take note and will get inspiration from that. Thank you very much for being with us today in Jota Jati Live. I hope that you will still have a great day Thank you. and keep enjoying the event. Back to the studio. Thank you, Celeste, and thank you, Your Royal Highness, for that insightful interview. I also think Madam Powell will be very proud to see all the wonderful impact that scouts are making. And speaking of that, we're about to connect with our group of scouts from the United Arab Emirates who are gathered this Jota Jyoti and learning to code at the Expo Dubai in 2020. Let's have them join us live from the event. Hello. Um, hello there. Oh, can hello. they see us? Hope so. Hi. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Very simple. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. There they are. So nice to see you here with us live. Um, can you tell us where are you right now and what your group is doing? Yes. Hello. Hear you on that. Um, need I repeat? Need I to repeat the question? Hi, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, please, uh, can you speak a little bit louder? Can you shout? Could you speak a little bit louder, please? Um, hi. Can you tell us where are you right now and what your group is doing? Ah. You can turn, okay. Yeah, so we can ask. Yeah. We are exactly now in Expo 2020 in uh, Saab House. We, we are uh, learning how to program in, uh, in Snap. Yes, today, yes, today I'm here in Expo 2020 at Saab House. We are here to learn about their technology to explore the basics of computer programming using the Snap. Oh, that's really great to hear. So I would like to ask, have you all had an experience in coding before? Yeah, I have an, I had an experience in school and in the scientific club in Fujairah. Uh, we learned how to program. Okay. So that's really cool to hear. Um, what, so what is it like to be participating as scouts in this huge expo? 
I'm so proud to be here today at SAP House and to be part of the Jata Duty from Expo 2020 Dubai. That's great. Um, so can you tell us about what you have learned about this activity today? We have learned so much. We learned how to, uh, how to make a spread and how to make more than one spread and how to uh, make a square and how to repeat uh, the, the program, yes. the coding. That's really interesting. Thank this you. is really great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this experience with us. You are truly and for all of us. And it was really interesting. And I think it's amazing for you to be part of a huge global exhibition and learning to go with SAP. Okay, moving forward, it is now time to start our Youth Got Talent segment. Don't forget to, pro to vote and react in the comments to choose a winning talent. Also, due to copyright issues, we had to change some of the music on some of these videos. So today's show, we start with Fiki from Indonesia with magnificent costume. He is going to show us his talent in a traditional dance. Please, everyone, welcome Fiki. who is from Trinidad and Tobago, and she will sing to us a beautiful classic, The Hills Are Alive. Let's all sing along. Hello, everyone. I'm nine-year-old Arisa Rajan from the Caribbean Isle of Trinidad and Tobago. Today, I will be singing The Hills Are Alive from The Sound of Music. The sound of music with songs they have sung for a thousand years. The hills fill my heart with the sound of music. My heart wants to sing every song it hears. 
my heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that fly from a lake to a tree. My heart wants to sigh like a child that flies from a church on a breeze to laugh like a brook when it trips and falls over stones on its way. To sing through the night, like a lark who is learning to pray. I go to the hills when my heart is lonely. I know I will hear what I've heard before. That was indeed a great singing voice you've got there, Melissa. So for now, we have Twin Kim, a five-year-old cook from Vietnam. Let's learn together how to cook Asian pancakes. You can adapt the ingredients of the recipe, but you can't be different to Twin's energy. Hello, everyone. How My full name is Chick Man. I'm Fayo. I'm a beaver, a Vietnam girl. Today I would like to introduce you the best for Andy. The picture of Vietnam is fun fail. The wood fail comes from the 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 lin fail. When boiling rice powder into a hot bed. Are red powder, water, oil, turmeric powder, scallion, box, spring. Okay, let's start! I'm going to show you how to make mantel. Firstly, add water to a bowl. Mix it up. in a bowl. Egg, turmeric powder. into the pan. Cover and fry for one minute. That made me so hungry and it was fantastic. Now we have Sarah, who is an Australian from Australian scout from Egypt with an enormous talent for arts and DIY. Let's try to build our own neckerchief. Hi, my name is Sarah. I am from Egypt. I live in Australia and I am in an Australian scout group. I like my scout group because I do lots of camping, bushwalking, and I go on lots of adventures. And today we are going to be learning how to make a DIY neckerchief. Let's get started and I wish you good luck. 
Now I will be telling you what we will be using to make the DIY neckerchief. First we will be using this magic colorful noodles. Then we will be using hot glue and it will be needing supervision by an adult. And then we will be using popsicle sticks and a black sharpie or texture. And we will be using also ribbon and scissors. And extra hot glue just in case. Now we are going to be deciding how long the popsicle sticks popsicle sticks will be on the neckerchief. First, we've decided that the right and left will be 27 centimeters. So, we're gonna align them with these two marks and put in hot glue them like this. Now that we've glued them all together, now we are gonna be putting the ribbon in the right place. so that we know where to put it next. Now we're gonna do left. Places we are going to be putting some stripes. Now that we've added all the stripes and put them in place, we're gonna hot glue them. Now that we hot glued it, we are going to be using a piece of ribbon and putting it at the end so that it looks like the end of the neckerchief. And we're also gonna be adding a woggle. touch on the top one. Now we are finished with our neckerchief and quick tip, you can also hang it up on your desk, in your room, or anywhere in your house. It is not provided to be hung up outside or anywhere outdoors because it might fly away. I hope you enjoy. I must say that was indeed a cute neckerchief. Next is Jade from the Philippines and we won't even tell you how talented she is. She will see, you will see it for yourselves. And again, we want to remind everyone that due to copyright issues we had to change the background music of several videos to make sure we stay live with all of you. Nevertheless, Jade, you have the spotlight now. Hello! I'm Scout Jade Go Patawaran from Christian Community Scouting, Quezon City, Philippines. Today I'm gonna be doing BTS Dance Medley. Hope you enjoy! I'm saying let's go You're saying maybe Let's find a disco you're stuck at home being so lazy hey. Give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some energy Wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come dance with me Give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some energy Wanna come, wanna come 
come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come dance with me There's no fire without smoke, I ain't letting you go I can see you buzzing like you can't say no There's no fire to entertain us with tunes from Wallace and Gromit themes by three different types of recorders. How awesome is that? Please welcome Oscar. Hi all, I'm Oscar from the Tornadoes Explorer Unit in Leicester, England, and I want to show you my um, multi-track recording of the Wallace and Gromit theme on soprano, alto and tenor recorders. Thank you, please enjoy. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, Oscar. Um, next is Dipshika from India, and she will show us her talent of painting on walls. Who wouldn't want to have her art in their room? I know I would. Let's take a look.
just breathtaking. I wish I could paint like that. Now we have Zoe Ka and Hui, who are two scouts from Vietnam, who will sing a beautiful song to us. If you know this famous song, let's join them. Hi everyone, my name is Pika, and this is my partner. Hello, my name is Hui. We are from Vietnam. We are robots from Kipong Mu, Quang Tơ, Cao Su. Today we perform this song, A Build to Work by Michael Jackson. To hope the world can end the COVID-19 pandemic. And we also want to everything gonna be normal so we can meet each other in next the world temporary in 17 UN Young Leaders for the SDGs. Let's head over to our reporter, Felipe, and meet A.Y. Young. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Felipe. I'm from Brazil, and welcome to our Meet and Jota Jyoti Live show. And today, I'm here with A.I. Young, a composer, musician, producer, a global SCDG young leader, and also a Eagle Scout. Hello, A.Y. We are very happy to have you here on Jota Jyoti Live. What's up? What's up, man? It's nice to be here with scouts around the world. <laughs> For sure, it's a pleasure to me be here with you too. And let's go, AY. We have show your story a little bit, uh, just short part of your it's story we have with your job with renewable energy on board scouting social media before. But for the people that don't know who are you, tell us who are you and what's your job? What do you work for with renewable energy? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's up, guys? I am AY Young. I'm founder of the Battery Tour. And of course, like you said, brother, I'm one of the 17 United Nations Young Leaders for the SDGs. And yeah, so I got here 
you know, powering my concerts. I store solar energy in batteries and, and I power my concerts using renewable energy. But ab above that, you know, in doing these renewable concerts and creating this movement called Battery Tour, I kind of inspire everyone in the world, you know, to be these outlets for change, people that take an action to make the world a better place. In doing that, I learned there's a billion people that don't have access to energy. So I built something not only to power my concerts, but to get them access to energy. So, you know, I spend my time getting the world plugged in. For sure, this inspired a lot of people around the world. We usually see that energy in cars with Tesla, but with music, that was really, really amazing. And we heard that recently you performed in Rome for the World Food Forum. We'd love to hear about this. How was this experience? Yo, yeah, Rome was crazy. I was actually the first artist in the history of music to perform at the Roman ruins. Uh, so what, you know, kind of happened was, you know, I, again, I said I became the young leader, you know, uh, the United Nations elected me to be one of the 17. And so, you know, I heard about this initiative, these goals, these 17 goals that the UN has, these SDGs that Scouts actually is, is, is all for advancing. And so I, I launched a project called 17, where I'm making the world's first sustainable album, one song for each goal, but each song with one or more of the Earth's biggest artists. And so in Rome, I was able Four to, minutes on the to get a pre world premiere of Goal 17, as well as Goal 2, which is the food goal, the food anthem of the world. And I did that in Rome. It was crazy. And this project is like starting and it's changing the world. So cool, man. Really, really cool. And lastly, we want to show our audience one of the songs that you performed in Rome. It's called Save the Planet. Can you tell oh. us about this song? How did you wrote it oh. and what did it mean? Save the planet. We gonna save the planet, everybody. Well, I mean, well, shoot, that's just got to <laughs> Yes. Right. Yo, uh, nah, Save the Planet is, this, is the sustainability anthem for the world. Like I wanted a song that could encompass all things sustainability, right? It could like keep our, our dreams powered up, our passions powered up. I think change comes from passion. And I think we're all outlets for change and we can all take the action, you know, to change the world. But I think it starts with our passion first. And so Save the Planet is just, you know, I did it for the president of the United States of America for the inauguration. It's the anthem. It's kind of like that rallying point just to bring the world together saying, hey, we can do this, right? We can, we can change the planet. We can, we can save the world. We can, you know, make a change. We can be outlets. Yeah. I totally agree with you, AY, because we have to think locally and act globally. And everything of this act is starting inside yourself. And you are doing that. Yeah, you are changing the world and for sure inspiring other people around the world too. And now, thank you so much for being here with us today on our Jota Jyoti Live. AY, we are going to leave our audience with your performance of Save the Planet from Rome at the World Food Forum. Have you any last word to say to everybody? Yeah, no, nah, man, this is Save the Planet powered by Renewable Energy in the Roman Ruin, the launch of Project 17. Guys, get plugged in. <laughs> save the planet. We gonna save the planet. Everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Woo! Save the planet. We gonna save the planet. Everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Woo! Save the planet. We gonna save the planet. Everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Yeah. Save the planet. Let's come together, guys. Save the planet. It starts with food, though. Hey. They acting like we from another planet, Mars. They say climate change ain't a thing. What you talking about? What you know about that? What's your carbon offset? Facts, we just wanna act. We ain't sitting back. Solar power, wind and solar power. Everybody need the energy. Let's store it up in power. The world, recycle. We need more recycle, but y'all acting like some followers on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. So tick tock to let the ball drop. The clock starts now. Plug in, baby. So tick tock to let the ball drop. The clock starts now. Yeah. The clock starts now, guys. We gotta come together for food, for the planet. And just take more action every day. Hey. Save the planet, 
We gon' save the planet, everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet, yeah. Save the planet, we gon' save the planet, everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet, Woo! Save the planet, we gon' save the planet, everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet, oh. Save the planet, we gon' save the planet. Guys, I wanna introduce you guys to a friend of mine, yeah? Her name's Rain Stern, she's saving the planet every day. Oh. And she got some guitar skills, you know what I'm saying? Oh shoot, Rain, what you got, what you got? Save the planet, we gon' save the planet. Everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Yeah, save the planet, we gon' save the planet. Everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Yeah. This energy was indeed contagious, wasn't it? Isn't it amazing to see how a scout can use his talent? to make a big impact and spread the word on making the world a more sustainable place. He is really talented indeed. And now, let's give a chance to welcome some of our scouts on screen working from around the world. Again, go to www.jotajoti.info slash join dash live to take the mic. Let's welcome our first guest, shall we? Hello. I think we have them here. Yeah. Hi. Hello there. Hello. Hello, can guys. Can you hear us? Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Um, can you tell us what your names are and where are you joining us from today? So I am Martin, and uh, I am from Portugal. Oh, that's really nice. Hello. I'm from Portugal, so. Okay. Um, can you describe Jota Jyoti in one word for us? Can, can you repeat the question? Um, can you describe to us Jota Jyoti in one word? Fantastic. Oh, really? It, it is really fantastic. So, which activity are you most excited for this year? Uh, chatting with other people around the world. So yes, that's the same for us. New person, new person. Okay. That was just great. Thank you so much for following us. And I'm sorry, but we have to welcome another scout to the show. But thank you so, so much. It was so great uh, to know you. So, I don't know if we have our next guest over here. Let's just wait uh, one second. We just want to remind you that if you want to join our show, you can go to www.jotajoti.info slash join dash live. So, Let's see if we can have another person over here. If we don't, we will continue with our Amazing Youth Talent Show. So don't you worry, but we want to welcome you over here. Oh, I think we have one. So let's just, there we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, can you hear me properly? Okay, uh, can you do calling from? Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Ah, perfect. Can you tell me your name and where are you calling from? So my name is Elishka and I'm from the Czech Republic. Oh, that's great, Elishka. What a beautiful name. Uh, can you tell me what's one thing you love about Jota Joti? Um... I love the cultures. 
Okay, that's very good. I love that too. And can you tell us something interesting about your scouting group? Oh, Elishka, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can okay, perfect. The question, of course. Can you tell me something interesting about your scouting group? Hmm. And can you try to speak a little bit louder, please? Yes, I can. So, yes. Uh, so, an interesting thing. Mm, I think that it's interesting that we are a, we are a quite a new group, but we've um, we've got so many new people and new ideas coming every day, and I just love it. That's so great, indeed. Uh, skin groups can be like a family, right? So, can you tell uh, something scouts that are listening to us right now? Can you send a message to them? Um, well, I would like to say that you should always just go for what you want to explore and not be afraid of just failing because if you cannot say, um, if you cannot, If you cannot participate in things later, then you're gonna regret it. So just go for what you love and participate in what you can, like Jora Jody. <laughs> That's perfect. Such a message, We have to continue with our next guest. But thank you so much for joining us today at Jora okay, Jody Live Show. And, okay, and let's bring on someone else now. Um, I guess he's already there with us? Hello? Um. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Um, hello. Good morning. Can you tell us your name and uh, where are you calling from? I am Drake Saint from Philippines, Boy Scouts of the Philippines. Oh, hi. The same from the Philippines. <laughs> hi. Um, tell us, what do you love the most about being a scout? here in the Philippines? Uh, there's so many more. Uh, there's so many things that I could say what I love in the Philippines about this, about the, the scouting in the Philippines. But I can say um, more on jamborees. Mm. The jamborees. I agree with that. <laughs> there are so many scouts gathered in one place. And even, even in the national jamboree, um, there are many, there are many scouts from the different countries here in Asia Pacific region. Uh, yeah, that I would have to agree with that. Um, next, what did you learn from scouting? Um, um, here, um, my scout trainers, my leaders, um, they taught us you should be a, you will be a scout or you will be a good person if you will follow the scout out and law. It is the first rule to become a good scout. Just follow the scout out and the scout out and law, and you will become a good scout. That's true. Um, can you tell us what are you most excited about this Jota Jyoti? Um, I am most excited. Uh, I am most excited from is the live shows because many cultures are been are being presented. Um, we have seen from. And many talents was seen in this activity. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming here with us today. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> you just share an amazing message with all of us. Our scouting law and oath are so, uh, so important to remember. So thank you so much for joining us today. And now let's focus on the Jota side of this event, our Jamboree on the air. Our next guest will explain to us more about amateur radio and what fun activities there are on our campsite that the scouts can take part in using the radio frequencies. So I'll hand it over to our reporter Mona 
who will introduce to us Marcos Clayton Fernandez, a member of the Toyota program team. Over to you, Mona. Hello everyone, my name is Mona and I'm from Lebanon and we are here today with Marcos who will uh, tell us all about amateur radio and Jati Jati. Hello Marcos, thank you for being with us. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? Ah, uh, nice to talk to you Mona, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Marcos, I am from Brazil. I'm responsible for the amateur radio during this amazing Jota Jotchi 2021. It is such uh, an opportunity to talk with you. So uh, I believe you're here to tell us uh, about amateur radio on Jotchi Jotchi. Uh, can you tell us what, what it is about and uh, how can scouts, uh, uh, how is it good for scouts and young people? Yeah, sure. Uh, radio, radio amateur uh, is starting the Jota in 19. 58, so we have a lot of time just uh, the scouting using the radio amateur to communicate uh, themselves during the, the jamboree. And after 40 years, we start in the internet. And today we also have amateur radio through internet, like uh, DMR, like Echolink. There are softwares that uh, helps radio amateur to talk to, to each other uh, through the internet. But we still using a lot of our radios that use in the, the atmosphere to, to send the information. Yes, yes, it's true. And we do use uh, the old radio in Lebanon. And uh, we are now up to date, uh, especially in uh, the technology world that we, are, we live in today. And uh, what can scouts expect from amateur radio on, on this Jota Jotty? Anything interesting, interesting activities, anything coming soon? Ah, sure. The scouts will have a, a lot of uh, trouble deciding what the amazing activities to do. We have in the campsite, we have the map with all the activities that we have on the Jota Jotti, and we also have the amateur radio run. There you can find a lot of activities for the scouts to do. One example is the earthquake in Scoutonia. Scoutonia is a country that we invented, and we will teach the scouts how they are uh, supposed to do in an emergency. Because when an emergency happens, like in an earthquake, all the communications fall down and only radio is still operating. So the scout will receive more scouts, will receive message from other radio amateur and with the leaders, they will uh, experience how to uh, follow up during an uh, emergency. So if they need to, to learn more about the amateur radio, this is one of the activities that we will prepare for them. So uh, Marcos, are there also any other stuff we can do? Any other activities that we can do live on the radio with each other? Yeah, during the, the Jota Jota, we also have the Jampus. The Jampus is a very nice game that the participants can, can play. When you register yourself in the jjj.info, you receive a JID. This is a code uh, that we, after conversation with people, you can exchange this code. You can exchange this code in talking to each other through amateur radio, through chat rooms, uh, through internet, in the scout link. So you collect these JIDs and we can uh, download in the website uh, bingo cards. So with the code, you try to fill up the, the bingo cards. And when you fill them up, you go to the Jampus document web page and collect a code. And with this code, you can claim a digital badge. So scouts will not receive a... a actually bad, but they will have a page with all these virtual beds to show what they 
do during the Jota JT. So it's amazing activity. You can also put a, a big map, a world map in the wall of your scout group and marking the, the people that you talk to. So after the Jota JT, you can see all the people that you talk to and collect this Jota ID. So it's a, a great activity also to play during this Jota JT. Sounds amazing. And I will be definitely playing. And uh, I can't wait for Scoutonia too. Uh, thank you so much, Marcos, for being with us. Back to the studio. Oh, Chris, we can hear you. Oh, I'm hi. <laughs> thank you, Marcos, for this and Scouts. Be sure to check these activities out. Up next, we want to take you all with us all the way to South Africa as we meet this wonderful group of scouts and some of the activities they have been doing. So hello everyone, I am Janin and I'm connecting with the first Walmart Scout group from Eastern Cape in South Africa. Hello everyone and welcome. Hello. 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 But why don't we start off by uh, hearing your guys' names? Um, awesome. Hi, my name's uh, Daniel Ulfik. Awesome. Uh, I'm Morgan Schroeder. I'm the Troop Scouter of First Warmer. I am Bryce Walker. I am Peel. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Josephine Jacobs, and I'm patrol leader of the Elephant Patrol. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hannah, and I'm the troop leader. Great, great. Uh, it's so nice to get, have you guys here. Now, what we want to hear from you guys is about your recent activities, whether it be digital or in-person, like camps, meetups, or service actions, anything. We would love to hear about those. Awesome. Uh, let's start with uh, maybe Josephine. You can talk about your cleanup if you want. Um, well, now with Scouts getting back into more in-person activities, we've been able to organize a couple more activities. And a couple of weekends ago, I organized a little cleanup on one of our local beaches. It spanned over the weekend, it was two days. And on the first day, we managed to clean up about 120 kilograms of litter in about six hours which is really just quite insane that, that that's worth, I think there were six of us, six scouts were on patrol. And we cleaned up a huge amount of it on the beaches. And I think that it's really important that scouts get out there and actually do something for the community because it is after all, our home, our community. And doing that, I think is very important. And also it, it gives the scouts a bit more time to like actually get more in person because we did have online scouts for a while, but now that I, that, as I said, scouts is opening up it's better, it gets the scouts more inter interactive and it gets them more excited to actually do scouts. Awesome. Great, great, thank you so much. Is there any other activity that you would like to highlight? Yeah, uh, I'll highlight the activity. Uh, a couple of weekends ago, we had our uh, uh, troop camp uh, on our scout hall grounds. Uh, it is, it's awesome to go camping. I, I love doing you know, in-person activities it's it's much better than than online scouting because you actually get to live by one of the scouting principles is learn by doing um so that that's what i thoroughly enjoyed um we it was over our long weekend we had a, a holiday on our friday so we were camping at our scout grounds from thursday all the way to sunday and i think uh, by the end of it the scouts thoroughly enjoyed it and had an awesome time Amazing. It's so nice to hear the scouting is finally going back into its uh, original setting. Now, yeah. um, the next question that I have, I'm going to try and uh, channel the questions towards uh, different people now. So I'm going to ask this next question to Daniel. So Daniel, can you please tell us something special about your scout group? Um, so can you repeat the end of the question? I didn't really hear it. So tell us something special about your scout group. Um, something special about our scout group is uh, the different um, 
personalities and the variety of people that you get. Because uh, normally you're just used to your normal friends at school, the schools that you go to. Um, but now with Scouts, um, you get people coming from different parts of uh, Port Elizabeth or Kabecha, as it's called now, um, different schools, and you can meet new people and uh, make new friends, which is uh, very nice. And, yeah. That's great. Thank you for that lovely answer. And the next question is, let's let's ask Hannah to answer the next question. Hannah, uh, can you tell us what does scouting mean to you? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, oh, okay, good. Sorry, I didn't see my icon light up. Um, scouting to me is like a sense of like family and community and getting to go out um, and do stuff that you don't really get to do because especially with COVID, we've been sitting in our houses for so long and uh, not really getting to go outside and uh, like you never like get, you know, getting opportunities to do things like going hiking or camping or zip lining or building rafts or giant catapults, um, <laughs> building really big fires just because we can, following all the correct safety protocols, of course, um, and uh, just learning a whole lot of life skills and making friends. Very well put. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hannah, for that lovely answer. And uh, let's go now to Bryce. And I really look forward to, he uh, to hearing the answer to this one. So uh, Bryce, can you tell us an interesting fact about your country? Um, an interesting fact about our country, we have 11 official languages, I do believe it is. It's a lot more than a lot of other countries. And yeah, we have a lot of different backgrounds and stuff. A lot of people coming from all over the world. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. Oh my, 11 different languages. Oh gosh, <laughs> that seems to be a lot. <laughs> yeah, they call us the rainbow nation of all that different cultures. And... Your road signs must be long. <laughs> 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 all right, um, the next question, uh, let's go down to Robert. Uh, hello, Robert. Uh, do you uh, have a message you want to send to scouts watching from all over the globe? Um, I think uh, the important thing that we must just remember is that like uh, the power of our movement, the power that we have of um, all of us being in all different countries and the power that we have just by being part of the same movement and we're all working towards the same goals, um, even though we have slight differences in each country, but we um, just the power that we have in, um, in that. Amazing. That's well said. And I'm really happy that everyone got a chance to speak and answer a question. I would like to thank you all so very much for being with us today in this very special event, uh, Jota Jyoti. And this was uh, Janin uh, reporting for Jota Jyoti Live and back to the host now. Thank you so much, Janin, for that interview. I couldn't agree more about in-person scouting. We sure all miss that. Now, moving on, who is some more talents? Because I know I am. So now, let's welcome Gail, who is from the Philippines, and she says she uses her voice to make a change. Get inspired and sing along with her. Hi, I'm Gail Angelou Ramos, 15 years old, from Pasay City Council, Outfit 357, Republic of the Philippines, and I will be singing Imagine by John Lennon. You 
Next, we have our friend all the way from Libya. Lynn will share her talent in making beauty acts. Lynn, the floor is yours. My name is Aya Aslam Ahmed. I'm 17 years old. My from Benghazi, Libya, and Benghazi negotiator, 8th Division Garden. My hobby, headmate accessories. a nice hand skills you've got there, Lean. So our next talent is a scout group from Japan, and they will be singing for us and dancing a song about Osaka delicious food song. We'll give you a song from us. Please rise to the Oh, from Bolivia and they will dance a traditional Bolivian dance. We want to get right our technique team has to change the traditional song chosen by Salvador and Isabel. It's time to cheer their beautiful talent. 
Let's watch and dance along. wish I could also have that alacrity in dancing. Up next, I am not sure we are ready for the next video. The pandemic really took our creativity to the next level. I am still trying to figure out how can Lukman from Sri Lanka do so many out of those tricks. Get ready to be amazed. John, there's no way I fade into oblivion. what I just saw. That was amazing. Now, here's something you don't see every day. A young squid a huge talent on double bass. Nadia, the youth got talent stage is yours. 
Hi, my name is Nadia, and I am 13. I live in Rapid City, South Dakota in the USA, and I am from Troop 172. The talent that I will be sharing with you today is I'm going to play an etude on my double bass. Chris, we can hear you. Hey, thanks. We have Mithila from Bangladesh. Mithila will share her talents in making a well-known and famous recipe. You want to know what is that? Let's watch. Hi, I am Mithila Dong. I'm from Bangladesh and I'm 17 years old. This year, I'm going to take part in the Jota Jyoti and I'm super excited about it. So today I'm going to share one of the most renowned and famous street food recipes with you guys and its name is Fuchka. I hope you guys will like it very much. That looks so delicious. Now, let's check our next talent from Malaysia. Farhan will be sharing his talent in dancing. So, are you ready to groove? Presenting to you, Farhan from Malaysia. That was great. Now, I'm so thrilled with all the youth talents. We will make a short break on the talents for a very special moment. Next, on our show, we welcome Andy Chapman, the chairperson of the World Scout Committee and also our Jota Jota live reporter. Andy will interview Peter Blatt, former member of the World Scout Committee and World Scout Committee Lesson for Jota Jota. Peter doesn't know we have a surprise ready for him, so and now, Andy, over to you. Thank you so much, Liana and Christopher. So today, I'm here with Peter Blatch, former member of the World Scout Committee, 
and World Scout Committee liaison to Jamboree on the Air, Jamboree on the Internet. So Peter, you've been contributing to Joe to Joe Dyke for some time now. Can you explain to everyone what your role has been specifically with Joe to Joe Dyke over the years? Certainly. Um, thank you very much um, to the chairman of the World Scout Committee. It's been my honor for the last four years to be the link between the World Scout Committee and the group of volunteers and staff from the World Scout Bureau who have been responsible for um, organizing and delivering and reviewing the fantastic Jota Jotai activities that we have each year. And over the last four years, can I say how exciting it's been to see the way that our services have changed, the way that um, we have become much more inclusive in our approaches, and the way that volunteers are taking a greater part in um, organizing and delivering some of the activities. And I think when we started about four years ago, at the planning level, there were probably about 60 volunteers involved, Andy, whereas right at this moment, I think that we would have close to 400 uh, involved. And that's just at the global level. It's not recognizing all the hundreds of um, volunteers, uh, young people and leaders that we have at the individual National Scout levels. And of course, um, as per each year, the program gets bigger and better, and it's so exciting this year. In fact, Andy, one of the little challenges that we have is to ensure all the members of the World Scout Committee participate locally wherever they can and join in the celebrations. And um, we're hoping that that will happen again this year. I'm sure it will. No doubt, Peter. You know, I, especially when I think back to the last four years of your involvement, you know, the, the whole theme around the strategy was growth. And what a, there's no better example of growth than when you look at what you just mentioned and the growth of the Jota Jotai program. So huge congratulations to all of the team and yourself for such an incredible accomplishment. So Peter, why is an event like Go to Jotai so important for today's young people? Well, Andy, it's important because the first thing is that it, we need to be able to see beyond our own little suburban group, beyond our town or city, and beyond our country. And particularly now, when we find that um, whilst we have lots of global impacts, we tend to be hanging around in our own little local communities because of COVID. So the opportunity this weekend in uh, to be able to participate with young people, with our brother scouts and um, our sisters in so many different learning experiences is going to be so important. And again, reinforce that we're part of a worldwide movement that um, at any part of the day or night, scouting activities are happening and that they're great fun and that they're safe. Yeah, you're so right, Peter. I know one of the most exciting things for me in scouting was just getting to meet new people at my youth, my troop meeting or going to, to summer camp. And this is just taking it one step for, forward and meeting people all over the world. So you're so right. And it's such an incredible opportunity for young people to participate in. And Andy, we might eat different foods and we might um, pray to different um, uh, uh, gods and, and have different faiths. But the bottom line is we all enjoy doing the same great activities wherever we are right across the world. Yeah, no doubt, Peter. Thanks for that. So, Peter, do you know why we are really here today? To, to celebrate and to encourage everyone to really get out and enjoy Joe to Jotty and get out and get your neighbors involved too. Most certainly. And we're also here for a very other special reason. The reason that we're also here, Peter, is we want to recognize your service in our biggest World Scout event. But above, above all, we want to recognize your years of service as a member of the World Scout Committee. You have the true Scout spirit that has been inspiration for millions to follow and the incredible impact you have on the scouting movement sends positive waves through all of our national scout organizations. With your support, we have built the most successful and popular scout event in the world. 
jamboree on the air, jamboree on the internet, with millions of scouts participating each year, revolutionizing the educational methods of scouting. Peter, I want to ask you to speak freely now on your experience with scouting personally as a reflection, because that's really the reason we wanted to organize this was to recognize you with a virtual ceremony for all of your contributions. Andy, thank you very much. Being able to be a leader in scouting in any role at all is absolutely a great honor. And I've had the, the rich privilege of being able to serve not only at my local level, but at the um, national level, at the regional level, and also at the world. And can I say that the in every uh, experience that I've had, it's been the teams that have motivated and encouraged one another, and that I'm so privileged to be part of scouting and to be part of so many great fun teams that are working for um, creating a better world. And that's what it's all about. That's what everyone's uh, augmenting towards the importance of making a difference in whatever way we can. Thank you for the recognition. Thank you, Peter. And on behalf of the entire World Scout Committee, thank you for being here with us and for all of the incredible hard work you do to make this movement such a great success. I'm gonna send it now back to the studio. Thanks. What a beautiful moment, Peter. This Oh, I think we lost Chris over there, but don't you worry because he will be back in a few moments. Peter, thank you so much. We as scouts are truly grateful for all of your years of service and we echo Andy's words. Andy, thank you again for being our special reporter today. Now, let's connect with our reporter Aisha to find out more about what we can enjoy in the Faith and Beliefs area of the Jota Joti campsite. I'll let Aisha introduce us to our Ross a member of the Jota Jyoti program team who will speak to this. Hello, my name is Aisha Medina and I'm from Malaysia. We are here with Ross Tutin who will talk with us about faith and belief. Hello, Ross Tutin. Thank you for being with us. Can you introduce yourself? Hello, um, my name is Ross. Um, I'm from Australia uh, in a wonderful city called Brisbane and I'm here to share with every scout and guide around the world the opportunities of our faith and belief zone for this Jota Jyoti weekend. Mm. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I believe you're here to tell us about faith and belief. Can you tell us what this is and why is this good for scouts and young people? Sure, I can answer that. Um, faith and beliefs is an important part of our scout program and gives you, the young people, an opportunity to learn about everybody that happens to be in a different faith or a religion. So I am a Christian, but all lots of scouts are also Christians, but also Muslim and Sikh and Buddhist, um, and lots of other faiths that are part of different areas around the world. So as you scouts will travel around the world and meet different people, it's good to understand how the people that you meet um, work in their life and do their daily activities, and they do that through a faith system. And so this is your chance to experience that so you can understand how to talk to people in different parts of the world. And what can scouts expect from, from faith, faith, faith and brief belief in this Jota Jyoti? Any interesting activities? Yes, we certainly have lots of interesting activities. Um, we have a quiz. So this is your chance to do a fun quiz to learn about the different faiths that are around the world. So you get to answer lots of questions or guess questions to see which is the right answer. And then we have two webinars that we're going to have a talk about. 
One in particular that I will be in is talking about how our faith and our beliefs inform us as scouts about the SDGs and the environment that we live around. So you'll get to see what my perspective is as a Christian. I'll have a friend who is a Jewish person and a friend who is a Baha'i person, and we will have a round table to talk about that. And you can learn from us about how we understand the SDGs and the environment through our faith beliefs. This all sounds great. I'm sure all participants will be very excited to be part of Faith and Belief. Thank you very much for being here with us, Ross Tutin. Back to the studio. Thank you for that, Aisa and Ross. We'll make sure we check out those activities. So now, let's take calls from some scouts, shall we? I'm so excited, and they must be too. So we welcome our next live caller. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Can you tell us where are you calling from? Um, we're from Switzerland. My name is Tayama. This is Aria and this is Fiji. And this is Kiko, Chiki, and I'm Alinta. So, can you tell us what you expect from this Jota Joti this year? I think what we most expect is some fun and to meet people and cultures from around the world. Thank you very much. It was really a nice answer. Um, shall we? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask how, how long have you been a scout? Um, uh, I've been for 12 years now. I had a little break, but I think the same amount of time. Uh, I think yeah. the same with the rest here. It's all about like 10 years. That's really long. And that's really nice. Um, thank you for calling with us to here today and being with us. Shall we take another caller? Thank you. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for calling us. I think we have our next caller over here. So let's go with him. There we go. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. <laughs> uh, can you tell me what is your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, my name is Luke. I'm from England. That's great, Luke. Much for calling. And can you tell me what is your favorite camping memory? Um, don't know really. Wow. Uh, uh, or you can tell me what is your favorite thing about camping? Uh, it's like just being able to um, do different things otherwise you wouldn't be able to do like um, different skills and stuff like that that's fantastic I love that too about camping and I really miss it so thank you so much Luke for joining us today at Jota Joti live show. thank you bye bye, bye. Shall we take another color? I guess some she. Hi, hello there. Hello, can you hear us? Hey. Did you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah. Hi. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Oh, so can you tell us where you're calling from and what is your name? I am from Philippines, and my name is Sofia Marai Padilla. Oh, very the same. I'm, I'm also from the Philippines. Um, 
Can you share with us um, uh, in your scouting, what has been the most important lesson that your adult leader has taught you? Mm. I guess that, e that is to believe in yourself and be independent. Yes, that is really a nice lesson that we should all learn. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Sophia, for joining us live here today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So, up next, um, for the next part of this event, being of service is one of our values as scouts. And we've seen so many humanitarian actions from scouts rushing to help their communities in times of crisis. Now, on our show, we are being joined by Marwa Awad from the World Food Program in South Sudan. Let's go to our reporter, Janine, and meet Marwa to hear about her work and some challenges in South Sudan. Hi everyone, this is Janin reporting live from Bosnia and Herzegovina and today here with us is a very, very special guest, Marwa Awaz. I'm not going to say too much, I'm going to let Marwa introduce herself and give us a little bit more details about herself. Hello Marwa and welcome. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, great to be here. So my name is Marwa Awad and I head communications in the World Food Program in South Sudan. And I'm uh, very excited to tell you about the work that we do and what are the challenges and how can we overcome them collectively. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Now, uh, we have some uh, a few questions prepared for you today. Now, the first one is, what does a day in the life of a humanitarian look like? Great question. So uh, in a complex operation, such as what we have here in uh, South Sudan, there are so many things, so many moving uh, aspects in the day. Uh, this has to be, um, this includes, for example, uh, finding out that there are challenges on the road as our trucks are trying to deliver life-saving food assistance from one location to another. Um, other challenges might include uh, the, um, the, uh, our inability to access one area because of climate change, because of floods. All of a sudden there's a lot of rain and there's so many uh, obstacles that way. So our day normally on, on a good day, everything is going, uh, goes very smoothly. But on a challenging day, what ends up happening is um, I go to my office and of course have to go through a bunch of emails to find out what is uh, the latest. Uh, we have to monitor the news to know what is going on uh, outside uh, our purview as uh, humanitarians. And once we have everything up to date, then we start the planning. So uh, for a communications officer, what we aim to do is to always be in the field. So to set up um, missions where we can fly to a location where we are providing food assistance and to be able to speak to the people on the ground, the people who, whom we are serving, uh, and to then ask them if their needs are being met through the assistance that we're providing or we can do something to improve uh, this uh, service that we are uh, giving them and giving their children. So uh, I'll give you an example. Recently, I went to an area called Awil South, and this is an area that unfortunately was badly hit by floods. A lot of people sadly were displaced. They had to run away uh, from their homes. They left their farmland. If the children were going to school in this area, they could no longer uh, be able to go to school because they had to move. And what we needed to do then was to go down and do an assessment, a humanitarian assessment. And this includes basically reporting on what is going on on the ground. So I was there with my team. We visited many locations that have been affected and we asked the people what their needs were. And of course we were already uh, uh, ready with the life-saving urgent food assistance that was needed. So this is just a, a snapshot of what a busy day would look like for uh, an aid worker here. 
Well, indeed, there are a lot of challenges, but Mara, can you tell us if there's a way for young people to help with all of these challenges? Yes, absolutely. So one way is to inform and educate ourselves. Let's find out about those countries that are desperately in need of humanitarian assistance. If your interest um, as, as young people is food security and nutrition, the World Food Program is the expert on the ground in a country such as South Sudan and actually in 90 countries uh, or more uh, where you can look up what is happening there, what's happening in country X and find out what the challenges are. Once you find out what the challenges are, if you're not interested in being a humanitarian, then internalize those challenges and the lessons to understand how you as a human being can, for example, avoid food waste. There is enough food in the world to feed the entire globe. And yet we have close to a billion people who go to sleep every night hungry and starving even. So um, reducing food waste, finding sustainable ways to live our lives and educating ourselves because maybe in the future, you would like to be part of this work on the front lines, saving people's lives. Thank you for that amazing insight. Now, uh, one last thing, Marwa, uh, we would like to ask you to send a message to all of our scouts who are watching uh, during this special Jota Joti Live. So if you could send them a, a, a one last message, that would be lovely. Absolutely, yes, and I'm glad to be with all of you right now. My message to you uh, is that food is really the basic and most important need that any human being or any living thing on the planet needs and requires. We are called first responders. People in the food uh, security um, uh, field are first responders because when, when a tragedy hits or a problem arises, food is the number one need. And so um, you are, if you're interested and you want to learn more about this, you are right where you need to be. And food touches the lives of everyone. So paying attention to how you eat, how you consume your food, what kinds of food you buy, and also looking out for people who need food in your community through supporting food banks, um, through helping people who have young children that they send to school, but maybe they don't have enough money to, to make uh, lunches for them. Help out that way um, and to make the world a better place. Lovely set. And thank you so, so much, Marwa, for joining us today in during this special event. This was Janin reporting live for Jota Joti. And back to the hosts. This was really educational and the work you're doing is very inspiring. Thank you to both of you so, so much. I couldn't agree more, Zyanya. So, shall we see some more of our talent show contestants? Remember to vote in the comments. Well, how many of us know about Silambam and Adimurai? Our friend here, Praktiksha from India, will be showing us her talent. Let's watch how is it done. Tiksha from Tamil Nadu studying in Barney Vidyalaya Senior Secondary School Karur. I am here to show my talent on Adimurai and Salama. Thank you.
performance. Now, our next talent plays a Thai classic from Mozart. Dui On is from Vietnam and his talent is playing the piano. My name is Yuan. I'm coming from Vietnam. I'm a scout of my team troupe. Today I will perform this song by piano. Uh, its name is Sonat K545. audio for a second um, there we go i was saying that that was truly nostalgic <laughs> um there are many ways we can express ourselves through music pencils and brushes moves and cooking our next talent uses a simple show bell and the endless sand of a malaysian beach safaya show us your talent Impressive. 
Now, our next talent is from Vietnam and will play for us a famous Coldplay song on his, oh no, sorry. Uh, oh no, yeah, he's gonna play a famous song on his piano. Sorry, hi Tro, the stage is yours. Hello everyone, my name is Huynh Kiong Hai Tru. I am from the Rover Scout of Rapuni Group, belong to Drunken Council, active in the Scout Big Name. Uh, today I will perform on one of the famous songs, name is uh, A Sky Full of Star, Coldplay. I hope you enjoy. What a great presentation. Um, up next is PB Kablan, is from India and he has great rhythm. Are you able to find some moves to the beat of his drum? Hi, I am PB Kablan. I'm a scout from India, Tamil Nadu, Thiruvaru district. another amazing talent in drawing. Gabriela from Ecuador will be sharing her talent with us and get ready to be mesmerized by her drawings.
great way. Oh, Chris, your microphone. <laughs> Sorry, that was really mesmerizing, Gabriela. We now fly to Ukraine in the Eurasia Scout region, and Sophia has a song for us. Welcome to our Youth Got Talent stage. <laughs> That was fantastic. And now our last young person might be a little bit familiar to you. Last year, Aaron enchanted us with his beautiful voice singing a Nat King Cole classic. This year, he submitted a new song and he earned his spot at the Youth Got Talent stage. Directly from the Philippines, Aaron flying us to the moon. Guys, my name is Aaron Tang. I'm a scouter from the Philippines, specifically from the Kabatuan City Council. And I have here a rendition made by yours truly of a song called Fly Me to the Moon. All right. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. <laughs> I really love this song. Imagine someone comparing you to going to the stars, going to see other dimensions, traveling the world. <laughs> I hope everyone here listening had that kind of love in their life. It's quite romantic, isn't it? I all wish you have that. <laughs> we all should have that. To live us love. So let's go. With song and let me sing for evermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, in other words. I loved 
you. <laughs> All right, so that's my rendition of the song "Fly Me to the Moon." I hope you like it, and see you around. All right. And that wraps up our talents for today. Up next, we have a guest from Fiji. Well, we'll talk to Bayat and Kailash about these messengers of peace project and how using the Scout Donation platform, his project was possible. Hello everyone, my name is Rubayat and I'm from Bangladesh and I'm here with Kailash Pillay, Fiji Scouts HQ Commissioner and National Scout Coordinator for Messengers of Peace. Hello Kailash, welcome to the Dota Dota Live. Hello Could and you... uh, Mula from Fiji. Sorry, can we start it again? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, this is Rubayat and I'm from Bangladesh and I'm here with Kailash Pillay, Fiji Scouts HQ Commissioner and National Scout Coordinator for Messenger of Peace. Hello Kailash, welcome to Jochi Jochi Live. Could you please introduce yourself? Thank you very much uh, Rubayat and uh, indeed it's a privilege uh, to be here. I am Mr. Kailash Pillay, uh, the National Messengers of Peace Coordinator for Fiji and also the Headquarters Commissioner uh, for Scouts uh, Association in the country. Uh, I have been with Messengers of Peace from uh, the year 2016 uh, till now, and uh, this is my second term as Messengers of Peace, and I've been a Scout leader for the last uh, uh, 35 years uh, in Fiji Scout Association. Oh, that is so great. Kailash, we know that when the tropical cyclone Josie struck, in the Western Fiji in 2018, scouts mobilized to help the people from that, which was affected and that you used the scout donation platform to help raise money to make it possible. Could you tell us more about the project? Yeah, so it was the first time that I applied for project through the donation platform uh, under the name, uh, we are uh, scouts, we are here. Uh, there was a Fiji flood relief project, and it was uh, started. Uh, I, I started that in April 9th uh, in 2018, and it went till April 30, 2018. I was indeed delighted uh, and uh, satisfied that uh, I applied for $2,000 USD, and it was fully funded uh, for 100%. Eh? Uh, so, uh, as for Fiji Scout Association, that was a big achievement uh, as a small country in the APR region, and we managed to do that. And uh, uh, the donation platform was actually, uh, the way I wrote the story in regards to the cyclone that hit uh, our Western Fiji, devastating about six districts. So uh, the way I, I, I wrote the, the story of, uh, for, for application and also what were the solutions and how I met uh, the objectives of my, of my project, it was incredible, and the, the honors goes to all my team messages of peace group in Fiji. And yeah, so that's that's how I applied, and uh, I'm really uh, happy that uh, as a country, Fiji Scouts, we were able to get 100% of, uh, of this donation. Thank you. That was certainly an inspiring story, I must say. Why did you choose to use the Scout Donation platform to raise money, and what was your experience? Could you please tell us? Yeah, actually, actually, for information, uh, for, for Fiji Scout Station, it was the first time for us to go to the Scout Donation platform. And you must you must have seen that the, the platform has been changed now compared to in 2018 till now. So uh, as it was the first time for us, uh, I tried all my best to go over the donation platform. And what I did was actually, I, I, I went to some other donation uh, projects that was already uh, being um, uh, uh, featured in, in the pl platform. So what I did was I, I went through all the uh, donation uh, projects to see how it was. And then I, I sat and with my team and uh, we, we made up a story and I discussed with my chief commissioner and also uh, with the IPR team. Uh, and then, yes, and then I, I got my, my project published in the donation platform and that's, that's how I went. That's great. Uh, do you have any advice for the scouts or what would you, would you recommend other scouts to use it for their projects? 
Absolutely, uh, I would I would suggest uh, uh, because now since I'm also the administrator of the Scout Donation Donation Platform in the country, uh, I basically check all the donation uh, projects. What I would advise is because there are categories of uh, uh, projects that you can apply from donation platform. But my advice would be please when you are when you are requesting for uh, donation, you don't have to go for maximum value. Try with a small project first. Like, oh, this project I went just for $2,000 USD. Uh, something that is achievable. Uh, something that you know that it's achievable in a short span of time. So that is my advice. And please, when you are uh, when you're requesting uh, uh, for donation as a project, the main uh, part is the story, uh, the summary. Uh, it has to be in detail. What was the, what is your problem? What is the solution? Uh, the number of scouts that will be involved, the number of non scouts that will be involved, and how we are going to inspire uh, scouts and also the same non scouts. So, storytelling is very, very important. Uh, how well you are able to describe your situation uh, for what you are applying for. And then uh, the second thing I would suggest is that uh, there are updates. Uh, there are updates required uh, for every three days or second. The, the, earlier, the more updates you give uh, for the project, uh, the, the better your project uh, uh, will feature uh, for those donors who would like to donate. So uh, it, that is very important and you need to like uh, daily check on your uh, donation platform to see uh, what's the uh, update so that you, you, you can you know, keep on editing it and you know, uh, trying to you know, feature your project in a way that people should get attracted with your project. And uh, basically in the humanitarian grounds, they are always eager to donate uh, for what, whatever particular objective you are set for the project. Thank you very much, Kailash. It was great having you here with us in the Jot to Jyoti Live. Hope you keep enjoying the show throughout the weekend. Bye. Thank you very much, uh, Mode from Fiji. Thank you. So this was Rubaiyat from Bangladesh taking you to the studio. As we get to the end of our show today, we will just remind you of some activities not to miss on the agenda. You can join the Innovation Lab and activities like creating a first aid kit and also coding. Check out the Jota Choti chat and join the conversation on humanitarian action, gender equality, and much more. To encourage you to explore as many activities as possible, you will get a special code that will appear on the screen on your screen that you'll have to insert in Challenge Valley and finish as many challenges as you can. Let's see how many challenges you can complete by the end of the weekend. Of course, we want to make sure everyone has a safe and positive Jota Jyoti experience. So we want to remind you to reach out to a listening ear and check the safe from harm area on the map. If you're faced with any situation, that makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, you should report this to safejota.org. Thank you for watching Jota Jyoti Live. Thank you for connecting with us this weekend. From wherever you are, we really miss meeting new scouts. Don't forget to keep an eye on World Scouting social media channels and follow at World Scouting on Instagram. Now, let's wrap up our show with your favorite talent, Jade, and see you tomorrow at the same time, 12 GMT. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, I'm Scout Jade Go Patawaran from Christian Community Scouting, Quezon City, Philippines. Today, I'm going to be doing BTS Dance Medley. Hope you enjoy! I'm saying let's go You're saying maybe Let's find a disco You're stuck at home being so lazy hey. Give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some energy Wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come dance with me
some, give me some energy Wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come dance with me There's no fire without smoke, I ain't letting you go I can see your buzzing light 